The initial market reaction to the new Labour-led government has been a fairly marked fall in the New Zealand dollar. What's driving that? Well, it's tough to always pinpoint the precise reasons for a move in a currency, but, but let's look at some of the drivers. Now, the New Zealand economy has been slowing. Winston Peters himself acknowledged that in his uh, announcement of the coalition. Um, so that was already in place prior to this government. But nonetheless, we've had nine years of stable national government, and now there's a change. More uncertainty means that people are more likely to be, um, to be slightly negative on the New Zealand economy going forward. So there's some nervousness about what a new government might do. That's right. The policies have been in place which have delivered a, a strong currency, a strong stable economy. Any sense that that might change from offshore investors will lead to a fall in the currency. There's obviously two sides to an exchange rate. So it's worth asking, how much of the exchange rate variation actually has less to do with what's happening here than with the global strengthening of the US dollar? Well, the US dollar is one part of the equation. Of course, the New Zealand dollar has fallen against many other currencies as well. Um, but what you've got to say is the thing that's changed is the domestic situation. So it's really the local factors that are driving this, this move in the currency. Going into the election, New Zealand first had a policy for the Reserve Bank to target the exchange rate in favour of New Zealand exporters. Do you expect the new government to take action at Reserve Bank level to bring the New Zealand dollar down? Well, the new government has already shown they're going to take action in changing the Reserve Bank Act. They announced on the 7th of November the terms of reference for their review. Now, that didn't actually explicitly include exchange rate targeting, but it did include a maximising employment mandate for the Reserve Bank. Now, that in itself, even though it's not targeting exchange rate, will be negative for the New Zealand dollar because it likely means lower interest rates going forward. Why? Because even if we have high inflation, the fact that there's that extra hurdle of maximising employment will mean there's less likely higher interest rates going forward. But from what you're saying, it sounds as though you don't consider that there's any great likelihood of a more interventionist form of exchange rate management. Well, within that um, Reserve Bank Act review, there is a phase two which is slightly more open-ended. So there is potential for more explicit currency targeting mandate going forward. But in the short to medium term, that seems to be off the table. In terms of your portfolio management, what assumptions are you making about the New Zealand dollar going forward? Well, we're looking at the main drivers of the economy and how they're changing. Um, so migration has peaked, we know that. There are capacity constraints in construction and in tourism, so they are unlikely to grow as fast as they have grown previously. And the housing market has started to slow, and that has important implications for the wealth effect, i.e. how wealthy consumers feel and therefore how propens what propensity they have to spend their extra cash. The less wealthy they feel, the less they're likely to spend, and that will have a negative impact on the economy. The more the economy slows, uh, the more likely the exchange rate is to fall. So do you, do you expect the dollar to remain under pressure in the short term? Short to medium term, yes. I mean, there's always volatility, but yes, in the medium term. We Have you firmed, uh, formed a view about what happens further down the track? Well, in the long run, New Zealand is likely to remain an attractive place for people to come and live and work. And therefore, our general level of growth is likely to be higher than major developed economies around the world. And for that reason... Um, it stands to reason that the New Zealand dollar will likely be firmer in the long term. Um, but that's notwithstanding the short-term drivers. It seems pretty clear from what you're telling me that the risks around the behaviour of the New Zealand dollar are almost all downside risks. How's that impacting your investment decisions around the funds that you manage? Well, many of the funds that we have have... Um, currency as a lever that we can use to express views on economies. Um, and that's a very important lever because it diversifies away from the other asset classes. That How we're does investing. that work? Well, so for example, if we're investing offshore, so if we're buying a, a US share, we can decide whether to take the currency as well. So if the US dollar appreciates um, and the New Zealand dollar falls, we will get a performance benefit from that, even if those shares don't actually change in value. So that's a separate decision, the currency versus what we're doing in the share portfolios. Are you identifying opportunity as well as downside in a falling New Zealand dollar? 
That's right. And in the local share market, there can be opportunities from currency impact on the shares that we invest in. So exporting companies, i.e. companies that are earning foreign currencies, are benefiting from a weaker New Zealand dollar. So our share portfolios have been moving their positioning around to reposition more favourably towards those type of exporters and away from other domestic focus sectors such as the retirement sector, which might be more exposed to a falling housing market.